tell me a little bit about your book, Bad Bananas? Sure. I wrote it um, because I had this vision of these rebel bananas. And yeah, and this is kind of fun. Imagine them with pierced peels and spiked stems. Oh. And then, you know, gang outfits and just came up with a lot of puns. And then my editor said, hey, you gotta put recipes in here if you're gonna have a story about bananas. Oh yeah. So what makes a good banana go bad? Time. Oh. Yeah, they get old really quickly. <laughs> but you know, when they get old and brown, that's when they're the best tasting. Uh-huh. What are some of the recipes you cover in your cookbook? Well, we have smoothies, we have mm -hmm. banana bread, pancakes, muffins, cookies, fruit salad, banana pudding, yummy stuff. Oh, it sounds like it. all sounds great. So I hear most of your books have food in them. They do, not on purpose, but I guess I subconsciously am obsessed with food. So what are some of the things that your other books are about besides food? Well, my first book is called Sounds in the House. Uh -huh. It's about a little dog that's afraid of the dark and being alone in his house. And he hears noises and he doesn't know what's causing them. Oh. But in the end, he's very brave, he faces his fear and he learns that he's just fine. Oh, that sounds good. I've also heard that you write books both in English and in Spanish, is that true? Mm -hmm. Yes, I like to write for both audiences, um, especially for people who want to learn another language. Um, so what I do with my bilingual books is I put a pronunciation guide at the beginning so that people can learn how to say the words in the language that they don't know. Oh, that's great! I have lots of trouble when I try to say things in other languages. Um, could you tell me the coolest thing that happens in any of your books? The coolest thing is probably the surprises at the end. Oh! Yeah, most of my stories have something unexpected at the end. So, either it's a surprise in the plot, or there's online secrets, or there's food secrets. So it's kind of fun. Oh, it sounds like it. So if I were to only read one of your books, which one would you recommend? Just tell my know. Maybe two. <laughs> probably sounds in the house. Uh -huh. Because it teaches you to face fear, it teaches you that uh, you can be strong when you're afraid, and it's about friendship. Oh, great! Well, what are some of the books that you like to read? Oh, I like to read mysteries, I like to read fantasy, I like to read everything. <laughs> Biographies, boring history books, I like them. Well, how did you become a writer, Carl? Really? By accident. Um, uh -huh. I, although I did study journalism, I never intended to be a reporter. But um, I, I got good writing skills that way and uh, wanted to uh, share some stories that would just come to me. And so I would write them down thinking that, well, yeah, when I'm old, I'll get those published. But I, I got lucky and found a publisher and got my first book out and now I have five out. That's wonderful. Do you have any tips for kids that want to become writers? Yes, read. Oh. <laughs> read. And the other thing you have to do is to write every day because sometimes people think, oh, I'll just write that story later, or um, I'll put it together later, but if you write a little bit every day, then you'll actually make progress. Those are awesome tips! I love them! Well, thanks so much for talking to me, Carl. Sure, happy to be here, Earl. Aww. And thank you for joining us today for this interview with Carl Beckstrand. I'm Earl, spokespuppet for the Salt Lake City Public Library, encouraging you to pick up books by Carl Beckstrand at your local public library. See you next time.